I'm pretty sure I've said this before, probably in the AEW vid I did, but I've noticed that when it comes to wrestling games, the WWE got that franchise on lock. Every year they come out with a new game and it always sells. Granted, a lot of that is because of lack of competition, but a lot of it is also because of the brand. Now, throughout the past, what, 10 years, we've had nothing but 2K games, 2K14, 2K17, 18, and recently 23. But before the 2K series, it was the number series, you know, 12 and 13. But before that, it was SmackDown vs. Raw. Now, the SmackDown vs. Raw series was a franchise of WWE games that went from 2004 to, I want to say, 2010. 2011 was the last in the series, and after that, they released WWE 12 to 13 to 2K14, and ever since then, the whole SmackDown vs. Raw thing was pretty much abandoned. Now, throughout those six years of SmackDown vs. Raw games, we've had a collection of additions and events. You know, SmackDown vs. Raw 2009 introduced the road to WrestleMania. SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 got rid of the HUD and made the gameplay a little more realistic than the previous ones. And SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 introduced an ability system. System that we'll talk about in a different video. And as entertaining as all the SmackDown vs. Raw games that came out after the first one are, the other SVR games don't hold the same amount as importance as the original one does. The one that started it off, SmackDown vs. Raw. SmackDown vs. Raw was a wrestling game released on November 2nd, 2004 for the PlayStation 2. And the PlayStation 2 only, apparently. And it served as a sequel to WWE SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. Now, Here Comes the Pain was not only a huge success, but is considered one of the greatest wrestling games of all time. Which is crazy because not only do I love it for being a wrestling game, I love it for the shit that they do outside of the wrestling. Like that's the only game I know where you can do an elbow drop off of the top of a moving helicopter in the middle of the street. Yes, they did that shit and Here Comes the Pain. Probably one of the craziest games I've ever played in my fucking life. So when you have a game like that, you kind of have to wonder, okay, if we're going to make a sequel, how do we one-up this? And in my opinion, I think they did it. Now, first things first, I want to talk about the gameplay because I think it really shines in the earlier SmackDown vs. Raw games, especially the first one. SmackDown vs. Raw's fighting system is literally exactly the same as Here Comes the Pain. Like, word for word, triangle is to run, X is to attack your opponent, square is to enter and leave the ring, and circle is to do both Irish rips and grabs. Same controls, which I don't have a problem with, you know, it's simple and it works. The reason why I think the gameplay shines though, especially when it comes to the fight mechanics, is the outcome. The fights are explosive. Whether it's simply punching your opponent in the stomach or slamming them on the mat, you feel that shit. The arena starts shaking violently, your controller starts vibrating out of control. Every move of violence you take has a very explosive outcome in this game. It's very visually appealing. And what helps this case even more is that it's fast paced. As the SmackDown vs. Raw series went on, the fighting style started to slow down, especially in like 2008. I know noticed it in 2007 but 2008 smackdown vs raw is when it got worse but in the earlier ones especially this one the original the fighting style was fast paced and triumphant and you not only see it but you hear it when you throw your opponent into the corner and you start stomping the shit out of them whether it's the controller vibrations the rope shaking or the actual sounds of their body hitting the mat you hear and feel every part of it in a weird way it helps with the immersion don't even get me started on the weapons. The weapons hurt like a bitch. When you crack someone with a steel chair, you feel like you're committing an attempted felony. You can hear the steel coming off of the person's skull. And it makes it even better because it's not like one of those things where, oh, you pick up a weapon and you bash them a few times. You can do that if you want to, but you can also do weapon grapples. If you hit somebody, but you move the analog stick in a certain way, you might crack them with the chair first, lay it on the ground, grab them, do a DDT head first on the steel, or you might, I don't know, hit them in the stomach, and when they're on their knees, you crack them in the face with it. And it's like that for a lot of other weapons too, the sledgehammer, somewhat tables, ladders, you name it. Even with tables and ladders, if you put up a table in the corner of the ring and you toss your opponent into it and you do some sort of grapple and you like slam them through or spear them through, the impact and outcome is so satisfying. 
I think THQ and Ukes did a really good job with the combat system in this game. It's impactful and immersive. And what makes it even better is the game modes that come with it. The game modes not only further the violent impacts, but they also further the entertainment. Whether it's Elimination Chamber, Last Man Standing, a TLC match, a parking lot brawl, or especially a Hell in a Cell match. The fights get even crazier. And this game has a long list of different game modes for you to try. They brought back the Slobber Knocker match, which is basically you fighting an onslaught of WWE superstars one at a time. You can't really go backstage like you could in Here Comes the Pain. Like let's say you're doing a hardcore match and you can go backstage and find your way out on the streets. You can't do that like you could in that. But the parking lot brawl is still a game mode and it's just as fun as Here Comes the Pain. Granted, you're not jumping out of helicopters, but it still works. The Hell in the Cell matches were just as explosive as ever. They were so much fucking fun. You can toss your opponent over the top of the cell and they'll just land neck first onto the ground. It was extremely violent. You can slam your opponent through the top of the cell as usual. I'll say the only thing I didn't like about the Hell in the Cell matches was if you wanted to find a weapon, you'd have to go outside the cell. Going outside was easy as fuck. All you have to do is open the fucking door. But I feel like it just leaving weapons lying around the floor, it kind of took a little bit of the immersion out. I mean, I'd rather have them find them under the ring. But the thing about the SmackDown vs. Raw games, especially, well, the majority, basically, you couldn't really go under the rings to find weapons. And the game doesn't really give you that much space to do so either, so I can't really blame it. But I think they should have put a little bit more space between the cage and the ring. So you can have space to either pull out weapons or just space to move. But it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, whether you can pull out weapons from under the ring or not, it really doesn't matter. I still love the Hell in the Cell match. Now, when it comes to game modes, and this is my absolute favorite part about this game, the three stages of Hell game mode. Now, they had it in Here Comes the Pain, but I think they did a better job in this one. So, a three stages of Hell match is basically an Iron Man match, but each point you make, the game mode changes, and it's only three. For example, let's say the first match is a normal match, and I win that. The next match is going to be a hardcore match. If I win that again, there's no third match. It's best two out of threes. But if I lose that, the third and final match would be a Hell in a Cell match. All three matches are picked, by the way. You pick them before the match starts. You can go from submission to hardcore to hell in the cell, to steel cage to hell in the cell to hardcore. It really it varies. And the reason why I say this one fixed it is because in Here Comes the Pain, if you were to do a hardcore match in the first one or any match in general, whatever damage your body was at, it stays that way. It doesn't change in the next round. So let's say you fuck up your opponent so bad that they're all red in round one. The next round, it doesn't change so you can just punch him in the face and pin them in like what seven seconds in this one it's different let's say you get your opponent's body red right the next match their body might be orange and their head might be yellow or it might be reversed they take away a lot of the damage so it's not that easy for you to get a pinfall victory or a submission depending on what the match is ain't none of that pin within the seven seconds shit that you can do and here comes the pain now you got to work for it it is such a creative match type. And it's really surprising that I haven't seen it in the other games. Like, you don't really see it in SmackDown vs. Raw 2000. You don't see it in the 2K games. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the last wrestling game in the WWE franchise to really have a three stages of hell match. Granted, we got Inferno matches and Buried Alive matches in future installments, but I really wish they kept this in the games. Another game mode I really enjoyed about SmackDown vs. Raw was the pay-per-view mode. Now, the pay-per-view mode goes like this. You can replay the matches of the pay-per-views of the year this game came out. Literally every single pay-per-view and what I like about it is each pay-per-view has its own intro. It's a reenactment of let's say one of the matches or one of the promos between two of the people that are part of a match of said pay-per-view. You, It's not voice acted but it's still fun to look at. And after the segment's over we flash to the arena and it looks so fucking perfect. You know the lighting's great you can see everything the fucking pyro in the ring and the stage and the ramp they 
flash through the crowd so you can see all the signs and they flash to the people at the announce table. It feels like a real pay-per-view moment. Now, I think the way they could have made it better is to have it a lot more voice acted, but the segments nonetheless were great to look at. And the matches themselves were fun to reenact. Like, let's say you're a John Cena fan and you want to go against the big show for the United States Championship at WrestleMania 20. If you want to reenact it that way, you could. You could do it the exact same way, or you can reverse it and play as the big show. You know, fuck up history a little bit. And to make it even better, you ain't gotta do the shit by yourself. It's two player. One person can play as John Cena, the other person can play as the Big Show, and we'll see what happens after. It's a really good addition to this game. And just like the Three Stages of Hell match, I wish they kept this in the other ones. Like, can you imagine a pay-per-view mode in 2K24 that's fully voice acted and everything? That shit would be spectacular. I don't think I've ever used that word before. Moral of the story, it was an amazing addition, and I really hope it gets to come back in the newer games. Now we gotta get into the shit that I don't like about this game, and there's a couple. Two things, right? Number one, there's no Stone Cold Steve Austin. Listen, hitting a stunner and here comes the pain was so satisfying because of everything i said in the beginning you know the impact you know the sounds of the body hitting the mat the rope shaking it was perfect i it was perfect and he wasn't in this one what the fuck now don't worry we still have the rock you know we also have mankind and bret hart granted you have to unlock them but we still have them right but there was no stone cold and i wish there was now the second part and this is the most important one in this game, they have all the entrances done right, all right? The entrances are perfect. I love them. But there's no outro. Like, let's say you had, like, I don't know, a 12, 13-minute long match, and it was amazing, all right? Y'all was putting each other through tables. Y'all was slamming each other through the mat. Y'all was having a five-star match, a beautiful match. And then the match ends, and it's just you standing over your opponent's lifeless body. The only time they do outros if you win or lose a match is, let's say you're playing Hell in a Cell. And you climb the cell, you reach to the top, and you know, you do your little victory pose. But that's the same thing for every single one. It's nothing special. They do that for all the characters. Other than that, there's no outro. There's no victory pose at the end of it. All you do is just stand into the ring, look at your opponent's lifeless body, all the while your music plays in the background. The entrances are fine, though. Like, I'll say my favorite entrance is the John Cena entrance. You know, him you know, dancing to the ring and running down the stage and then sliding in the ring. It was perfect, right? But after that, there's nothing. It's like they put all the energy into the entrances. So much energy that they just completely ignored the outro. And that shit's lame to me. I don't like that. It kind of gives you that, okay, so like what now feeling. You see what I'm saying? I don't like that shit. Other than that, this game was good. And before I dip, the last thing I want to say, the soundtrack for this game game man the smackdown versus raw games every single one had a 10 out of 10 soundtrack and this one is no different granted the soundtrack might as well be called smackdown versus raw sponsored by power man 5000 and i say that because they have like what four or five songs on this bitch i don't mind you know it works but like still but this soundtrack was so good you had worlds collide by power man 5000 you had everything's falling apart by zebrahead this shit was so stellar and to make it better just like here comes the pain the music plays while you're fighting so it's not like they have created songs for here comes the pain that plays in the background no you're actually playing to some shit that you'd hear on the radio or mtv all the while you have jr and jerry Lawler talking in the background it's so much fun like being in a match fighting it out and all you hear is worlds collide by power man in the back or songs like the way it is or alone like these tracks are so fucking good to listen to like you could just leave your tv on on the main menu and let the music play out that's how good the shit was. Nonetheless, that's all I really have to say for SmackDown vs. Raw. I think this was a beautiful introduction to the series. Um, I'll probably talk about more later, but this one was so fucking good, bro. If you've never played it before, I'll say find you a copy. Uh, if you don't got a PS2, tough luck. I'll say, I don't know, download an emulator on your laptop. I don't know, bro. You'll figure it out. You're smart. But this game is mad fun. And as usual, I had fun playing it in order to make this video. But that's all I got for y'all. You know, I'll see y'all in the next episode of Reggie TV. I appreciate y'all for stopping by. And I'm out.